Question 17. Note that the wording of the question has been modified from the original text. Sally decides to put $100 at the end of each week into her superannuation fund. The interest rate quoted is 8% per annum, compounded weekly. Which expression will calculate the future value of her superannuation at the end of 35 years? This scenario may be modelled using a geometric series or a geometric progression. Firstly, we'll use a recurrence relation to find the value of the investment at the end of the first week, the second week and the third week. From that, we can generalise a pattern or a series that gives us the value of the investment at the end of n weeks. Then we can apply the sum of a geometric series formula to come up with an equivalent expression to give us the value of the investment at the end of n weeks. So let's go back to the question. Sally decides to put $100 per week into her superannuation fund. So I'm going to let capital M equal 100, and that represents her weekly contribution. The interest rate quoted is 8% per annum, compounded weekly. So we need the weekly interest rate or the interest rate per week. And we do that by taking the yearly interest rate of 8% or 0 0.08, and we divide that by 52. So that's what this little r here represents. So little r is equal to 0 0.08 over 52. Now I'm going to define capital R as 1 plus 0 0.08 over 52, which represents the percentage increase from one week to the next. And n gives us the total number of weeks that this investment will run for. So it's going to run for 35 years with 52 compounding periods per year. So n is equal to 52 times 35, which equals 1,820 weeks. So let's model this with a recurrence relation. So at the end of the first week, Sally deposits $100 or M which represents that weekly contribution. No interest applies because the deposit is made at the end of that week, not at the beginning of the week. So A1 is equal to capital M. A2, which is the value of the annuity at the end of the second week, is found by increasing A1 by 0 0.08 over 52, and we do that by multiplying M by capital R, and then Sally is going to deposit another M dollars at the end of the second week. So the value of that investment after week two is MR plus M. The value of the investment at the end of the third week, so A3, we find by increasing A2 by 0 0.08 over 52, and we do that by multiplying MR plus M by capital R yet again. So MR times R is MR squared, M times R is MR, and then Sally is going to deposit another M dollars at the end of that week. So A3 is equal to MR squared plus MR plus M. Now we can generalise a pattern from this. AN, which represents the value of that annuity at the end of N weeks, is equal to M plus MR plus MR squared plus dot 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 plus MR to the power of N minus 1. And we notice that it's n minus 1, because we see this is a3 here, yet the highest power on this side here is 2. So it's always 1 less than the subscript here. Factorising out m on the right-hand side, we get an is equal to capital M outside of 1 plus r plus r squared plus dot 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 plus r to the power of n minus 1 in brackets. And we can see that what's in brackets here is a geometric series where the first term is 1 and the common ratio is capital R. So we can replace what's in brackets with the sum of a geometric series formula. So we get AN is equal to capital M outside of capital R to the power of N minus 1, since there are N terms in this series, all over capital R minus 1. Now substituting the values for capital R and M, so capital R is 1 plus 0 0.08 over 52. And capital R minus 1 is 1 plus 0 0.08 over 52 minus 1. So the 1s will cancel. So you end up with 0 0.08 over 52 in the denominator. 
So AN is equal to 100 outside of 1 plus 0 0.08 over 52 in brackets here and here to the power of n, which in this case is 1,820, so that's the total number of weeks that the annuity will run for, minus one, all over 0 0.08 over 52. Therefore, the correct answer is option C.